Hello, my name is Toms. I'm with the hardware testing department here at Microtech. In this video, I'll be setting up fast Wi-Fi client roaming on our 802.11ax access points, going into detail on how it works, as well as demonstrating its benefits. Roaming, or fast BSS transition, as it's called in the 802.11r amendment, enables Wi-Fi client devices to switch between access points with next to no interruption in connectivity. A regular connection by a client to an AP involves multiple steps. The device checks if an AP is ready to accept a the connection, then exchanges information about supported operation modes. After that comes authentication, where the client device proves to the AP or a radius server that it knows the password. Finally, the AP and client agree on an encryption key. With the improved authentication procedures of 802.11r, a client device performs all these steps in the beginning during its initial connection to the network, but after that it can connect to other APs much quicker. This is particularly important for real-time traffic such as calls or video streaming over network, and because such roaming does not come with the downsides of interrupted connectivity, client devices are more eager to do it, so they are more likely to always be connected to the AP with the strongest signal. But that's enough theory. Let's configure these two APs to enable clients to quickly roam between them and show you how it works in practice. For fast BSS transition to work between multiple APs, they need to be managed by the same instance of router OS. Here, I'm enabling Capsman, or centralized management feature, on one of the APs, then configuring the second to hand over the management of its Wi-Fi interface to the Capsman controller. Now that both interfaces are managed by the same board, I'll create a common configuration for them, specifying an SSID, enabling fast BSS transition, and letting RouterOS generate a random password. All that remains is to apply this configuration to our interfaces and enable them. And that's it. If I connect to one of the APs, I can perform a fast transition to the other. This manual command to initiate roaming is a handy tool for testing the functionality, but actual end users don't need to issue commands for the device to roam. Devices will periodically scan for other available access points, and if the client device finds a different AP, which has a stronger signal, it will roam to it automatically. When I started my Wi-Fi connection, my laptop automatically connected to the AP with the strongest signal. Then I instructed it to roam to the other AP. If I now instruct it to perform a scan of other access points, it will choose to go back to the AP with the stronger signal. But how fast is fast BSS transition? First, let's see how long the interruption in connectivity is when roaming between the APs without taking advantage of fast BSS transition. Here, I'm instructing my laptop to switch from one AP to the other while pinging my gateway. The laptop disconnects from the current AP, connects to the target AP, and establishes connectivity in five seconds, and over one second worth of data is lost. Now let's see how long that takes when taking advantage of fast BSS transition. In this case, no packets are dropped and the interruption and in connectivity lasts a little over one second. During the fast transition we just performed, the client transmitted its reassociation re request to the AP directly. This is called fast transition over air. But a client device can also transmit the same request to the AP it's currently connected to, for it to then transmit, relay that request to the other AP over Ethernet. This is called fast transition over a distributed system. In our testing, the performance was similar to fast transitions over air. An important thing to note is that whether you will see benefits from fast BSS transition in your network depends on the client devices you have. For example, in our testing, Apple devices were always eager to take advantage of fast BSS transition, while our Windows laptop 
only used it in combination with Radius authentication, which is where you will most likely see many APs to roam between and where you'll see the largest benefit because Radius authentication typically takes more time than simple password-based authentication. But even if not all of your devices support it, there's really no reason not to enable it if you have compatible access points. Even if you're not running a setup with multiple centrally managed APs, I have it enabled at home to let devices roam between the longer reach 2.4 GHz and high throughput 5 GHz interfaces of my HAPAX squared. That'll be enough for this video. If there are other Wi-Fi related topics you would like for us to cover, let us know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.